That was a bit of a different start to the videos, wasn't it? This is a C Beckstein. The model is A208, and it's a rather rare piano. I don't actually get the chance that often to play C Becksteins. I've played a few of them, like maybe two or three of them in the Bay Area, and I've done videos on that. But today I'm in Stanton, California, in Southern California at Kim's Pianos, and look what he has. A C. Beckstein, which is a absolutely fantastic piano that I don't get the chance to play very much. Like I said, so whenever I do, it's a real treat. It's a, it's a special piano. It's one that's a lot different from many of the other pianos on the market. The feel, the tone of it, just something about it is a lot different than what you get with, say, Steinway or Bosendorfer or the other European manufacturers or any American manufacturers, anything like that. It's a lot different, and I'll show you that in this video. As far as the design of the piano, it's really pretty standard. There's nothing unusual or strange too much to talk about the piano. Like I said, the model is A208. It says EP on this little card on the inside here of the piano. On the harp underneath of that card, it says C. Beckstein Berlin on a little uh, embossed decal there on the harp. And the rest of the piano is rather simple and minimalistic, but also very standard as well. There's a large decal on the middle. I'll show you a picture of that. It says C. Beckstein Academy. has a picture of a, a lion with like two tails and a snake's tongue and the C. Beckstein logo. Yeah, that sounds pretty weird, doesn't it? But you, you, you can see it. And uh, so it's got that on the soundboard as well as a very similar badge on the harp as well. And the inside of the piano has this interesting wood on the inside. But what I like most about this piano is the sound. It's really unique. There's something about it, especially in the mid-range here, which I'll get to in a bit, but there's something about it that just is different from most of the other manufacturers. But what I'm going to do first is play the treble here, which I actually haven't spent that much time with on this piano. Uh, I played it a little bit, mostly in the mid-range, and so I'm going to be playing it kind of for the first time on video, and we'll see what I think of the treble, but I'm thinking it's going to be pretty nice. So let's play my original test piece that I always play on acoustic pianos and see how that sounds on the C. Beckstein model. What was it, 209? A208. Yes, A208. Here we go. It has a kind of an interesting sound. Like I said, it's a lot different from the other piano manufacturers. It's both rich and also crystalline up here in the treble. It has a certain substance, 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 something like that, something to it that just makes it really interesting. And that really high treble is super sparkly, isn't that? That is a really special sounding treble, and that is really, really amazing. I like that a lot. And for the size piano this is, it's 208 centimeters, and I don't really know how big that is in feet and inches, but if I had to guess, I'd probably say it's around six feet, maybe six foot two or three. It has a good sounding bass, isn't it that? That sounds really, really nice, and I really like that a lot. Let's play something that brings out the warmth and the beautifulness of the mid-range of the treble, and let's play, I mean, the mid-range of the piano. Let's play some Bach and see how that sounds.
as I'm playing this piano, I'm trying to figure out what other brand I can relate it to and how I can describe the sound. And to be honest with you, the, the brand of piano that I think the sound on this is closest to is probably Fazioli. It has a crispness to the sound. It's very clean, but also very rich. It's not clean and uh, thin. You know what I mean? It's it's clean and rich. And one of the things I'm noticing is that like the terminations down here, when you play the note as staccato as possible, it's insanely crisp. That's wild. It's just, the note just dies. There's almost no harmonic ringing. There's no extra sustain. Once that damper, damper, damper touches the strings, the note's over. It's wild. When you get down here to the copper's wound strings, it becomes a little bit less crisp, which most pianos will do, but I just find how crisp it is in this section to be really, really wild. Right in here, right in about that section, it's really, really crisp and really interesting, and it just has a really unique sound. So for the final piece I'm going to play on this panel, let's play Claire de Lune by Debussy and see how that sounds on the C. Bechstein A208. I really like this piano a lot, and it's going to be interesting to see how Debussy plays on this piano. The action on it as well, this will be a good test for it, because what I'm noticing on the action is that it's kind of, it's heavy, but it's also quite responsive as well. Uh, it's, it's a lot... I mean, it, when you push the notes gently, they go down, but it's, it has a, a firmness that a lot of other manufacturers don't quite have. And so that can kind of be something that you might have to get used to. If you like a piano with a light action, this particular piano probably isn't for you. But if you like a piano that has a substantial action, a heavy, heavier feeling action, I think you'd probably like this piano a lot. So let me play WC, Claire de Lune. Hope you guys enjoy and we'll see how it sounds on this piano. It's a great test piece. Plays the treble, plays the mid-range, the bass, tests the action. It's phenomenal and hope you guys enjoy hearing it.
ending to that piece is so beautiful. I love the sound of that last chord. But hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing Claire de Lune being played on the C Bextine Model A28. A couple of things I'm noticing about the piano is that I find myself pedaling a little bit differently with this piece. I can't exactly explain precisely where and why and how I am, but I feel like, anyway, that I'm pedaling it a little bit differently because this piano has such a crisp sound and doesn't have a massive amount of sympathetic resonance. It has some, but when you let off on that pedal, it completely disappears. And so I find myself pedaling just a little bit differently and holding it for a bit longer, stuff like that. So I think if you're going from really any other manufacturer, to a C-Bex and there's going to be a small little bit of a learning curve with the way you play and the way you express yourself with the piano. And another thing I'm noticing, and it could just be me, I could be crazy, but I feel like the pedal and the whole lyre is set back a little bit farther, like maybe an inch or two farther away from the keys, because I feel like the damper is really far, the damper pedal is really far away from me, but I'm sitting about where I normally sit on the piano. Like the bench is right about, it was crooked, hope that wasn't bothering you guys. But I feel like I'm sitting right exactly where I'm supposed to be, but I feel like the pedal should be right about here. You can see my foot should be right about here. That's what I feel like. But it's actually down here. This is about where it, I feel like it should be. So it could just be me, I could just be feeling crazy, but I came to this piano earlier and I was like, whoa, the pedal is way over there, and I came back to it again later to do this video and I feel the same way. So that's another thing that you might have to adjust for on this piano, and it could just be me. Maybe I have stubby legs, I don't know, but I've never noticed that before on a piano, um, except for this one. So is that, you know, is that good, is that bad? I don't know, but that's just something that I did notice. If you do have short legs, that might be an issue for you, but that is something that I noticed. So I wanted to mention that as well. But overall, other than that small, strange little thing, I really, really love the sound of C. Becksteins. When I played them before in the Barrier, I really loved them. And I play this one now, and I really love it. And I'm hearing rumors that Benjamin Kim might be getting a concert grand version of this in the future. And if he does, I will come back here and I will play it and I will do a video on it. Because those are so hard to find. See, Bexine concert grands are like impossible to find. It's like finding a Stuart and Sons piano here in America. You're not gonna do it. I think there's seven of those in America and there's there's probably seven C. Bechstein concertgrands in America, too. They're extremely rare, and I find that kind of odd that, that C. Bechsteins are so rare, because I believe over in Europe they're a well-known brand. And, but yet there's hardly any of them over here. You know, you know Bosenhofer, you know Hamburg Steinway, you know other, you know, European piano builders, but C. Bechstein is one that you almost never see. So I really wanted to do this video on this piano and show you guys just how nice it is. I love the feel of the action. I love the sound of this piano. It's all really, really amazing. Before I go, one thing I wanted to mention is that the feel of the action when I was playing Debussy, I was reminded of the feel, kind of, of the old Baldwin SF-10s from like the 70s. Now those also had render action. It was not as refined, anywhere near as refined as a modern piano, but they had that same kind of heavy, but responsive feeling. And when I was playing this, I, almost, I had flashbacks to practicing when I was 10 years old and my Baldwin SF-10 at home, it has that same kind of feel, but it's also very responsive and very, very good as well. It's very easy to play and I had no difficulties whatsoever playing it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of the C. Bechstein A28. Like I said, really hard to find, and if you're in the Stanton, California area, you should really come by and visit Benjamin Kim. He has an amazing selection of pianos. I've done some videos in the past at his store, and I'm gonna be having a bunch of videos now at his store. So if you want, you might as well go check out my channel. And again, if you're in the Stanton area, definitely drop by and say hi. He has an amazing selection of really quality, awesome pianos. So if you want, you can go check out my channel, see all those videos. If you want, you can come here and see the pianos in real life. And if you want, you might want to think about subscribing to be informed of all of my future uploads. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.